Life in the watery world of marine mammals like seals, sea lions, walruses, otters, is very different than that of land animals. That means their tools and senses have to be different as well. Previously, we learned that otters are red-green colorblind. <coughs> and whales and sea lions have lost their ability to taste. <laughs> but today, we're taking a deeper dive into the most mysterious of the underwater senses, hearing. First, let's talk a little bit about sound. Sound is actually a wave of vibrations that create areas of more and less densely packed particles. Particles like air, water, or even solids like metal. The denser the substance, the faster these sound waves travel because neighboring particles will more easily bump into one another. Water is about 800 times as dense as air, and sound will travel about four to five times faster underwater than above it. So it's no surprise that hearing is one of the most important senses for a marine mammal like sea otters. However, the sensory biology of sea otters is poorly understood. There hasn't really been a lot of research into the topic. But researchers at the Long Marine Laboratory based in UC Santa Cruz are working to change that. They recently published a study, and you can find that link in the descriptions below, that measured the range at which sea otters can hear both above and below the surface of the water. I'll talk about what they found and why it's so important to sea otter conservation here in a minute. But first, I want to talk about how they did it. If you're a fan of this channel, then you probably remember how a few months ago I trained Joey the sea otter how to spin. I think he can only spin to the left. You're probably also familiar with a few other behaviors that the sea otters have, like cat mice clapping or snoot booping. The snoot boops, while adorable, actually do serve a higher purpose. In the field, it's something known as targeting. We typically train all of our animals to do some form of targeting, whether that's on an object like a target pole, our hands, or even some type of research equipment. Jessica, target. They typically need to hold this target until given some sort of cue that tells them that they did a good job. Thank you. And that's essentially what the scientists at UC Santa Cruz did with sea otters. They trained a sea otter named Charlie to participate in a hearing test. They trained Charlie to swim down and target on an underwater hearing station. Charlie was to stay there until he heard a sound. Now, if he got it right, he got an awesome fishy reward. Just like Joey when he learned how to spin. And by adjusting the volume and the pitch of the sound that they were playing for Charlie, these researchers were able to figure out just how sensitive the coffee bean ears of sea otters really are. They found that sea otters can hear a range of 0.125 to 32 kilohertz. In comparison, the hearing range of a human is generally 0.02 to 20 kilohertz. That means that humans can hear lower frequencies or deeper sounds than sea otters, but sea otters are much more sensitive to higher frequencies. The same is actually true for pinnipeds like seals, sea lions, and walruses. Researchers believe that underwater, a California sea lion can hear sounds in the range of 1 to 40 kilohertz. So again, they are much more sensitive to the higher frequencies than humans are, even though they generally vocalize between 1 and 4 kilohertz. So if their vocals are such a low frequency, why is it that their hearing range is at a much higher frequency? And the answer might have to do with the vocalizations of their top predator, killer whales. The frequency of killer whale whistles ranges from about 0.5 to 40 kilohertz, 
almost the exact range of a pinniped's hearing. It's a little known fact that there are actually several ecotypes of killer whales. About half of those ecotypes feed exclusively on fish, and the other half, marine mammals. Ecotypes that feed on fish are very gregarious and noisy, making vocalizations almost constantly. But those that feed on marine mammals like seals and sea lions very rarely vocalize. And that's because they don't want their prey to hear them coming. Speaking of whales and dolphins, let's talk a little bit about how they hear. If you look closely at this beluga whale, you can see that there is an ear right behind his eye. That is, however, vestigial, which means that it's just a visible evidence of something that is no longer present. That's because the ears of whales and dolphins are no longer functional. Their ear canals are narrow and plugged with a very dense wax. And the ear canals no longer even attach to the eardrum. So if they don't have functional ears, can they still hear? The answer is obviously yes. They have exceptional hearing. They can hear frequencies as high as 150 kilohertz. But how? Well, they actually hear through their lower jaw. If you look at the skull of a dolphin, the lower jawbone has a cavity that runs all the way up to the middle ear. This cavity is filled with a fatty substance that's a perfect conduit for sound. But why is any of this important? Why was the sea otter research even worth doing? The answer is pollution. Typically, when we think about pollution, we think about things like oil, plastic, garbage. But noise pollution can be just as harmful. Human-generated sound from drilling, dredging, boating, and seismic exploration. These can create noises that interfere with their ability to respond to danger and communicate. Noise can alter their behavior and at high levels can even permanently damage their ears. And that's why the experiments with Charlie are so vitally important. That data is being used to effectively manage the sound pollution in sea otter habitats. It's also why trained animals and trained behaviors like target, spin, and boop are not only exceptionally cute, but very important. Because those are the tools that researchers are going to use to help protect these vitally important species. Well, that's it for the five traditional senses, but what about the non-traditional ones? Like a shark's ability to detect electrical currents underwater or echolocation? And do sea otters have a sixth sense that you don't know about? Find out in next week's Deeper Dive. Cheers. This cavity is filled with a fatty substance that's a perfect conduit for sound. <laughs> I don't know if you expect me to do that. I don't know. I don't know, but it's going to be great. I can't wait. That seagull just dropped a clam and cracked it open. Did you hear that? Yeah. He's going to do it again. So we'll film it. He drops it. Wow! Um, I'm used to seagulls being stupid. <laughs> it's pretty clever. <laughs>